Good morning and welcome to This Week. This morning, breaking news. America's number one fugitive on the move. If Edward Snowden has left Hong Kong, what went wrong? We'll talk to the four-star general who runs the world's biggest intelligence service. These programs provide critical leads to help prevent over 50 potential terrorist events. At the heart of the domestic surveillance controversy. They told us they weren't collecting any data on American citizens which was an outright lie. NSA Chief Keith Alexander, his first ever and only Sunday interview, a This Week exclusive. Our powerhouse roundtables weigh in on all the week's politics. From the president's challenges overseas. Complacency is not the character of great nations. To that trench warfare in Congress. We have fundamental disagreements on many things. We turned a bipartisan bill into a partisan bill. America's youngest congresswoman is also a combat veteran, and she serves. Hold on to the Aloha spirit. Tulsi Gabbard takes our Sunday spotlight. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos, reporting from ABC News headquarters, George Stephanopoulos. And we begin with that breaking news. Edward Snowden, the 30-year-old government contractor who escaped to Hong Kong with a treasure trove of America's top secrets, is on the move again. Landing in Moscow today, apparently on his way to Venezuela seeking asylum. And the question bedeviling U.S. officials this morning, how did this fugitive slip away again? Let's get right to the latest with ABC's chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas. And, and Pierre, the U.S. is working with Hong Kong to bring Snowden to the United States. But the, the Hong Kong government said today that the U.S. request did not fully comply with Hong Kong law. What went wrong here? George, it's been a game of cat and mouse, and the U.S. government has lost this round. Just yesterday, a senior law enforcement official told me the U.S. government was expecting a lengthy extradition process. In short, they were anticipating a lot of back and forth with Hong Kong authorities before they got this resolved. Clearly, Snowden took full advantage of this fact that the wheels of justice often turn slow. He got the heck out of there because there was nothing to hold him. This was not a faulty request from the U.S. government? Well, they're claiming that it's not that these processes take a long time and that there's back and forth. And again, while they're trying to resolve this, there was nothing to hold Snowden. So is there anything the United States can do to stop Snowden now while he's in Moscow if he's waiting for this flight to Venezuela? George, it does not look this, like there's much that the U.S. government can do this point. at this point. Snowden appears to be bound for countries that often have a combative relationship with the U.S. And how did this happen? How, what do U.S. officials say how he was able to get out of Hawaii and into Hong Kong in the first place and then get away again? Well, you know, a, a, a big issue here is the fact that when the information was taken, allegedly taken by Snowden, there was no blinking flag to let the U.S. government know that the information was taken. So he was able to move freely before they fully knew what had happened. Finally, it appears here that he is being accompanied by a representative of WikiLeaks. They appear to be doing everything they can to help get him to what they consider safety. Well, based on statements from WikiLeaks officials today, they helped Snowden leave Hong Kong and may be traveling with him. At some point, the U.S. government is going to have to resolve whether WikiLeaks is a journalistic entity or an enemy of the state. Some officials are going to say they are aiding and abetting someone who may have broken the law, George. Okay, Pierre, thanks very much.